Okay, so now let us start with analysis of algorithm. Why do we need to analyze an algorithm? Because sometimes it may happen that a computational problem may have multiple candidate solution or algorithm. For example, sorting. There are many algorithms for sorting which we will see later on. But in such a case, when you have to implement, then you may be confused like, uh, okay, which one should I implement? Whether this weather algorithm A or weather algorithm B. So to solve that confusion, you need to compare those algorithm based on different performance criteria. Even if uh, your computational problem is not having many uh, candidate algorithms like uh, sorting, even then you should analyze your algorithm to get an idea of the amount of resources your algorithm is using. So here in this course, even though there could be uh, many important performance criteria for a computational procedure, the two important ones are first, first one is the time complexity, the run time of an algorithm, the time. Here I have written down few things on the board, we will see them one by one. Okay. So uh, the time complexity, the second one is space, space complexity, the run time, the, the time taken by an algorithm, the space taken. So amongst these two, the one which I will focus on for now is the time complexity of an algorithm. Later on in the course, we may uh, take up space complexity. So let us focus on time complexity of our now. So how do you think you could analyze the time complexity of an algorithm? One way uh, you could say that let us uh, run an algorithm, uh, write a program for that algorithm and run it on a system. But there are many systems whose runtime may differ because there are many machines. Some are very slow, some are very fast, some are supercomputers. So this does not seem a very good idea. What we basically want to do and what is basically usually done is that we try to do it in a machine independent manner. Our algorithm uh, analysis of an algorithm is independent of machine. So how do we do that? We do that by counting the number of primitive steps of, or operations. What we do? We count the number of primitive steps or you can say operations. You can also use the word operations over here. What do you mean by primitive primitive steps? Primitive steps mean basic steps like uh, basic computational steps like basic arithmetic steps or basic data transfer steps like uh, data transfer from, from register to memory, memory, these, these kinds of things, basic steps, okay. So we count such steps and we say suppose uh, there is an algorithm which uh, has a x number of steps. Let's say there is an algorithm A which is having x number of steps and there is an another algorithm let's say B which is having x plus y number of steps. So this one is having more number of steps compared to this one. We can safely say in this situation that this will uh, take more time to run as compared to this one okay now one more thing uh, okay let me take an example suppose if I ask you to sort these two number 3 comma 1 now you can instantly sort it you'll say 1 comma 3 now if I give you a big list of numbers say 4 8 19 12 1 6, 5 now this might take a slight slightly more time and effort than this one and suppose if I give you a list of say thousand numbers then that may take you uh, uh, no suppose you are doing it on pen and paper then that may take you uh, let's say you know even more time than compared to this and this one so intuitively what we uh, the idea we could take away from here is that as the size of your input is increasing the amount of effort that is required on your uh, part to perform that activity is increasing. Same, uh, the same, you know, the same thing we could apply to a system. We could think of a system in a or a computer system in the same way. So to cons, uh, you know, to because we just have come up with this idea, what we will do, 
that we will count the number of primitive steps yes we will do that but we will do that in terms of the as a function of the input size so we will count the number of primitive operations as a function of of input as a function of input size now i have written down the same uh, algorithm for average which we have already uh, discussed uh, let me count the number of steps in this algorithm so let me say this is line number 1 line number 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so here we say we can say okay this is one operation let's call it one with this we can see there are n increment operations and n time it is uh, come checked so we can say okay there are n operations over here here also we could say you know this line will also because there is a loop then this line will be performed n number of times so we can say n over here and we could also say that this is one operation but if you look at this line carefully it is uh, you know there are two operations involved over here one is a data access operation we are accessing the ith element of the array a and here we are adding it and then saving it in this variable had this been some other variable we would have another operation so uh, this is you know this whole line it does not actually represent just one operation it may uh, be like two primitive operations or maybe sometimes three primitive operations so what we'll do we add a constant over here we'll say c6 or here we may say c4 here we may say c3 and here we may say c8 and also because you know uh, different uh, machines have different run time so if one primitive operations will take i if i say that one primitive operations will take a unit amount of time then on a, any particular machine this line will take c6 that uh, and n n is that number of operations over here so you can write it in terms of in like a polynomial where you could say it is c4 plus c6 into n plus c3 plus c8 you can write it like this okay and uh, okay let it remain like this for a while we'll come to this again but before we come back to this i'll take you to this part of the board here i have uh, assumed uh, four algorithms the a1 let's say this is a1 a2 a3 and a4 so uh, we have assumed that we calculated and found that the run time of an algorithm the number of steps in an algorithm right when i say 6n i mean that there are 6n primitive operations in an algorithm of input size n so this has 6n number of steps we say that run time is 6n e this has 12n this for this algorithm the run time is n square for this algorithm the run time is of you know 2 raised to the power n suppose we took an algorithm and we calculated like this and this is what we found now if the input size would have been 10 what would have happened on a system that takes 10 raised to the power minus 5 second to perform a single primitive operation now there could be uh, you know machines with different capacities this is just an assumption so this one will take 6 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 second for input size of 10 this one will take 10 raised to the 12 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 second this one will take 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 second here you can see that this is very different from this and this whereas these two are very close to each other this is 6 into 10 to the power minus 4 and this is 12 into 10 to the power minus 4 this one is very different from this and this why because here we are multiplying by factor of n and here we have n square now let's come here this is 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 this two sorry into 10 raised to the power minus 2 so this is also very different from this now let us increase the input size and make it 10 raised to the power 5 what is happening this is 6 this is 12 and this is coming out to 1 into 10 raised to the power 5 much different from this 10 raised to the power 5 is far far away from 12 and 6 and look at what happens here this is a very big number if you calculate it in number of years this will be many many number of years 
So the basic idea we can take from this example, what I want to tell you here is that, that you know, like 6 and 12 and you know, they are coming 6 and 12 and this is very much different from this. So the important thing over here is this term, you know, this n, this n, this n square, this 2 raised to the power n and the constants attached are not very significant. From a, you know, from perspective of a person who wants to compare two algorithms and because, uh, you know, in the analysis of algorithms, we uh, do not uh, need to be very exact and accurate. So from that perspective, we can treat these two as same. That is 6 and 12 and oh, they are same, not much difference. But this is much different from this. And this then difference becomes more profound and visible to you as the input size keep on increasing. So you see this is much different from this and this you can see is very much different from this. So as the input size increases this term the n the n the n square and they become very important and the constants attached they become insignificant. So when we have an algorithm like this or any other algorithm and we come up with a polynomial like this what we do we say that oh this is of the order of n. We ignore all these things, you know, these, these things, we tend to ignore them. It's not that they are completely irrelevant, but they are irrelevant, uh, you know, for our need. We, we do not need them that much. So we just focus on the, uh, you know, the highest order term in our polynomial. We'll say, okay, it is of the order of n. Had there been some nested loops, we'll see some examples of the types. Had there been some nested loops over here, and uh, uh, so no, I had if, if there would have been some n square term over here, uh, then we would have said it is we would have said it is of order of n square. If there would have been some n cube term over here, we would have said the it is of order of n cube, and I would have ignored the rest of other other terms. Had there been a two raised to the power n, something like two raised to the power n, we would have ignored the rest and focused on two raised to the power n. Why? Uh, I hope you will try to understand that uh, from, from this example, I think I have tried my best to make it clear that comparatively, you know, comparatively, okay, if you try to be exact, this is different from this, but compared to this, this and this are, you know, very much same, not much difference, very much different from this and very, very much different from this and then you know why this difference is called. So, we ignore that constant terms and other, other lower order terms and focus on higher order terms, okay. So, 